Hello, my name is Ilya Lyashenko from KU Leuven, and I will present our work with Charlotte Bonte on homomorphic string search with constant multiplicative depth. In this work, we study the following use case where the client has some text data and she wants to outsource uh, this data to some cloud provider which will call the server. At a later moment, the client wants to search over the outsourced data. So she sends a search query to the server. The server handles this query, forms uh, search results, and sends them back to the client. In addition, our results can be also easily extended to the use case where the client wants to search over some data possessed by the server. Our security model assumes that the server is semi-honest and oblivious to the outsourced data, search queries and related search results. Indeed, uh, to hide data, the client can just encrypt it. But she must choose an encryption scheme or a protocol that allows operations on encrypted data without decrypting it. In other words, every client's query is an encrypted function that should be performed uh, by the server without any knowledge of the secret key of the client. This is exactly what homomorphic encryption can do. In general, a key allows to compute any function on ciphertexts such that it results in a related function on plain texts without decryption. In our use case, a key has the following advantages over other cryptographic primitives. Namely, unlike in multi-party computation, it has low communication complexity and doesn't demand interactions between the client and the server for computation. Any search functionality can be implemented in HE, whereas PIR, ORAM and PSI provides only a limited set of operations and demand data preprocessing. And finally, HE is believed not to leak any information on the content of encrypted messages, which is the drawback of protocols with symmetric search for encryption. The downsides of HE are running time and high ciphertext expansion rate. To alleviate these issues, the following optimizations are the most useful. First, it is possible to pack multiple data values into one plaintext, such that every homomorphic operation applied on encrypted messages results in an operation applied on all these packed values simultaneously. This technique is similar to a parallel computation paradigm called single instruction multiple data, or SIMD in short. Thus, the amortized running time and memory overhead per data value is reduced. The second optimization is related to the fact that encryption parameters of HE schemes expand with the increasing multiplicative depth of an evaluated circuit. Hence, reduction of multiplicative depth results in a better memory overhead and often in a better running time. What circuit are we going to evaluate homomorphically? We studied the string search problem, where the goal is to find all the occurrences of a given pattern in a given text. We assume that both the text and the pattern are given as arrays of characters, so no preprocessing is involved. There are multiple efficient solutions to this problem, but their efficiency is based on early termination. This is impossible in HE, as early termination implies some knowledge about the text and the pattern being encrypted. Hence, we stick to the naive algorithm where the pattern is just shifted by one character along the text and compared to the corresponding substring of the text. If these uh, substrings match, we write one into the corresponding position of an output array and zero otherwise. In the example, it means that the output array has two ones in positions two and four as the pattern matches the substrings of the text starting in these positions. In this work, we provide a general framework how to design secure, naive string search using HE with SIMD packing. First, we show how to encode patterns and large texts into homomorphic plain texts, such that they are presented by a race of characters and remain searchable. Then, we demonstrate how to search over such ciphertexts. For this task, we designed an algorithm whose multiplicative depth is independent of the input length. 
This allowed us to optimize encryption parameters and resulted in up to 12 times faster running time than in the state of the art. And finally, we show how to compress the results of string search before sending them back to the client. This reduces the communication complexity by a large constant factor. So let's start with pre-processing. Assume that the client has the following Latin text and she wants to search patterns of length at most two. The client and the server agree on an uh, HE scheme with a separate text containing four CMD slots. How to encrypt the text into this uh, separate text? First, we encode the first substring of the text of length 2. Then the next one, this needs to add one additional character to the next free CMD slot. Next, we proceed to the first substring, which fills the slots of the first separate text. As a result, this separate text contains three substrings of the text of length 2. The next length 2 substring of the text is encoded into the slots of the second separate text. Note that the same character E is present in two separate texts. Then we proceed to the next substring, filling up the second separate text. And in the same manner we encrypt all the length 2 substrings of the text in four separate texts. To be precise, we need R separate texts according to the following equation. This algorithm assures that every pattern of length at most two is present in at least one separate text. To encrypt the pattern, we encode as many copies of the pattern in the CMD slots of a separate text. In our example, it is two copies of length two pattern. Given the separate texts of the text and the separate text of the pattern, how to match the pattern and the text substrings? Let's take one separate text encrypting the text. This separate text has two substrings starting in the same positions as the copies of the pattern. Thus, the matching problem reduces to the matching of the corresponding arrays of slots. Since every CMD slot is isomorphic to the finite field, we need to match vectors over a finite field. Let T and P be vectors corresponding to a text substring and the pattern. Then the matching can be computed by the following deterministic function, which can be implemented by homomorphic operations. This function compares the corresponding vector coefficients and then combines the results of this comparison. As a result, it returns 1, if and only if uh, vector T is equal to vector T. The drawback of this algorithm is that its multiplicative depth depends on the pattern length. We propose an alternative randomized function whose depth depends only on the size of the slot finite field. If vector t is equal to a vector p, uh, then this function will always return 1. If the vectors are different, the output is 0 with probability 1 minus 1 over q. Hence, uh, the size of the finite field Q must be large to have a decent uh, success probability, but at the same time it must be small, such that the depth of the matching function is practical. However, uh, for a large Q being a prime power, we can use the following trick. Uh, we can rewrite the exponentiation as follows and use the fact that raising to the pth power doesn't require homomorphic multiplication. It means that uh, we need multiplications to compute a to the p minus 1 and k minus 1 multiplications to combine all the powers of this element to powers of p. As a result, the multiplicative depth of the exponentiation and thus of the randomized matching is relatively low and equals to the logarithm of p minus 1 plus the logarithm of k, which doesn't depend on the pattern length. Using the randomized matching, we compared two substrings of the text with the pattern and wrote the results in the corresponding slots. But there is one more text substring of length 2 in the separate text we need to compare. Uh, to do that, we shift the pattern separate text by one position to the right, such that the pattern slots are aligned with this substring. 
than we perceived as before. As a result, we obtained two cipher texts containing the results of matching the text substring encrypted by the first cipher text and the pattern. Since the results of uh, matching lie in distinct CMD slots, uh, we can combine them uh, by addition. In the same way, we match the pattern with uh, text substrings encrypted by other ciphertexts, which results in four output ciphertexts. Thus, the communication complexity is going to be similar to sending all the text back to the client. However, we can compress the results in the following way. Remember that every CMD slot is isomorphic to finite field FQ. Uh, thus, it is able to store log Q bits, uh, but the output ciphertexts contain only one bit per slot. We can pack these bits uh, first as elements of the prime field FP. It can be done by multiplication by a power of 2 and uh, addition. And uh, since FQ is isomorphic to a polynomial ring quotient over FP, we can pack prime field elements as coefficients of polynomials. Uh, this is done by multiplication by a power of X and addition. As a result, uh, four ciphertexts are compressed into one. Moreover, one slot is still free, so we can pack more data there. We implemented our framework using the HLIT library on an average uh, commodity laptop. The texts and the patterns are encoded by UTF-32 symbols with wildcards. In this table, we present timings of matching patterns of length uh, 50. Uh, even though in the paper we consider patterns of a varying length from 1 to 100. Our algorithm can be easily parallelized such that the running time of each row in the table can be reduced to 5 minutes. In comparison to prior work, our matching algorithm is up to 12 times faster at the cost of lower failure probability. In addition, only our framework provides the first matching algorithm whose depth is independent of the pattern length and a compression algorithm for the matching results. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to your questions.